All right, back on the Thunderbird again. We'll finish up this air ride, hopefully. We like two wires, power wire and remote turn on wire. And you gotta wire up that relay right there. That's uh, mounted up above the compressor. So that's where we're at today. Uh, as far as we know, I believe that's the only thing left. We got it here on the lift. We're going to drop these two wires and see if we can get some air in this thing from the switch. So, last time we hooked up all that stuff there, mounted the tank, set the tank up, mounted the compressor, set it up, and the relay. We got our lines ran in and all that good stuff. And we're about ready to, we're about to get this thing underway under its own power. So, here we go. Let's see if we can finish it out here in about an hour or so. <clears throat> Let's go around to the front. Show you the front up here. So that that relay wire, it only gets hot when the switch comes on. And that tells the compressor that if it's low on pressure, that Hey, we need to cut on and put some air pressure in. This right here is our relay wire. Yeah, I know it's black. It's the only thing we had to work with what we got. We'll have a power wire hooked in here to the power of the battery. And then this will run alongside it. We've got this hooked in down here to switch power off of our solenoid. And we'll fuse all this stuff too. We'll put a fuse in. There'll be a fuse up here or maybe back there. But either way, there'll be a fuse. We're going to drop this wire straight down, run the frame rail straight back, and get in, take it into the, the hole that we have punched for the airline. We'll use that one hole for both purposes. And then that'll be it. Now, let's talk a little bit about the 60. If you look, I'll take you around, going up and going down, and going all around. Out there is the 60. Now, you know, we've been working on those air leaks on that 60 out there. I've done a couple of videos. We redone the switch, and then we We redid some of the fittings and put some new tees on, some better tees. We got that done, and it was a little bit better. We're still leaking. Well, it was in here on the lift, and you'll know from the last time we worked on the Thunderbird that it was it was up on the lift, and the Thunderbird was in the back where we could work on the ground, putting the tank and stuff in. So, got out here today, that Thunderbird aired it up with the shop air, backed it out, went to start 60, and aired it up. And what I find right out the gate, my switch is leaking. Not the line, it's the actual paddle switch in that panel. Now, I mean, you know, cheap switches or whatever, they're all about the same when you order them. Set up the same anyway. You can get some really high-end Firestone switches of about fifty-something dollars a piece. But what I'm thinking now is I really like the setup on the Bubba's Thunderbird. It's just two switches up and down, front and back. He's got three lines that actually come in the car. The difference between it and the 60 is the 60 has four switches. It has one switch for each airbag. I did not want that intentionally when I got it, but they were all out of the two switch setup, so I had to go to the four switch. Well, now that I've got a blown paddle switch, I may actually convert it to two switches. I think, I think that that would save me a lot of headache going down the road with this thing. But I mean, these air ride systems I've come to learn are temperamental anyway. I don't particularly care for. I like the ideal of it. I do. I like the ideal. 
but like my Cadillac's not air ride. It's a uh, it's static drop. We cut the spring block from the rear. And I don't ever have a problem out of it. The ride height is absolutely great. It's got six inches of clearance between the bottom of the frame and the highway. Well, that six inches, that car never, rarely, ever, ever, ever rubs. So, you know, it works out real good. And with this hair ride stuff, well, I'm just blowing off steam. I, I'm, I'm aggravated. I'm aggravated that this switch is leaking, so, and I'm going to have to buy a couple because they're leaking internal. I had suspected this, but I finally got confirmation on it this morning because, I mean, it was undeniable. I mean, that thing was blowing out more air in the daggum shop fan. i tell you what, if it had been a hot air balloon, buddy, we'd been on the ground. I'd barely able to get it out of here. So, There'll be another video or two on that because we'll, we'll end up replacing them switches. But for today, let's just try to, you know, mess with one thing at a time here. See if we can get these two wires run on the Thunderbird. See if we can get it going up and down. I believe it's going to be good. As far as what we've actually done going up and down with the Thunderbird on Chop Air, everything seems to be tight and right. So I'm hoping that there's no issues. Have to go back. But there's always going to be little bugs and kinks. I mean, you know, just what it is. It just it can be frustrating, you know. So I don't know. And plus, I'm tired. Went to the ball game last night. Stayed out way too late. Now I'm tired. I don't want to mess with nothing. But we really need to get his his car. Since it's just two wires, we really need to get this thing, you know, done and wrapped up. I know he's wanting to drive it, you know, car show and stuff. So. But anyway, enough of me jabbing along. Let's, uh, let's get on this thing. Let's jump into this thing. See if we can get it took care of. Alright. We're going to go ahead and start by putting uh, the battery end on. And we'll start running from the battery back. Is the way we'll do this. So, I'll get you adjusted here. You can see a messy table. and You can tell when we're doing something. Because there's junk everywhere. Here's the wire we're going to use. Now, this end here is ready to go. If you want to bring the camera up here and we'll, we'll start to run them down. I've already showed them the uh, remote wire, so. Drop this down. I like this wire right here. It's limber easy to work with. We'll pull it back, back there where we need it, and then we'll run it inside. I'd like to run it and just pull it off, but I don't know if we'll do it. We may just pull it to the back and then cut it off. Alright, you want to go ahead and uh, raise up the car. Now we got to see how we're going to run this thing. I'm going to readjust the camera. Alright, let's go up here. Everybody can see. Going up. Before we go down. put you guys under the car and then that way you can see where we're actually running this wire. Uh, oh yeah. The camera angles are going to be rough today. I can see that right now. Alright, let's see. Yeah, I think you might can see maybe.
we go around, we can go right through here. We could probably, we can tie in right here to the zip tie. And we could go right through here, maybe. What do you think? What about the as well? Yeah, we can do that. That'd be good. Until we get around this exhaust pipe. And then can we cut off or that we can cut the exhaust? I don't know. Um, well, you know what? If we go, if we actually go with the line, if we can cut over right here. And just like we've done. None of this moves up and down. Well, it does, but it obviously don't hit these trans lines. So we just need to stay close to the trans line. And then we'll be, I don't know if this wire is going to be up or not. If we go up here, then we go just a little bit more. Alright. I need just a little okay right there. I need a zip tie right now. Go ahead and right here. Alright, I need to go ahead and zip tie that up right into these wires right here. I'm afraid that we'll forget. A bunch of mess right here. You might have a lot left over. That's good. We'll use it somewhere down the line. Go ahead and run it through there and all that. We can start tying it off and getting it out of the way of everything. Rolling. I'm gonna have grease all over my head. Can you see? 
I think you can see. Right there, maybe. And the other one is this little uh, clear one on this loom. I'm just going to go down through here and put several on it to hold it. All right, so we got the car back down now and we're gonna wire up this relay. As you can see, I have the direction. Because every one of these prongs on this relay do something different and you gotta have it hooked up right. So the best way to always do is just double check with the directions as you go. No, I need a, a, a good size for that. That's a, a, a pretty good size screw in that. So I'm gonna take the relay loose from the, the compressor just so we can double check the numbers and the wires that we're hooking up here so it all works when we're done. Can't go wrong reading the direction. Learned that the hard way, mind you, like a lot of people do. So, that is what we're going to do. The anticipation is mounted. It hooks into that pressure switch. So I need a, a space put on that pressure switch. Right. Perfecto. Alright, we're ready to kick the tar and lock the power. Just kick it on, let's make sure the compressor is going to come off. be big man or little boy luckily it turned out to be little boy take two on seeing if the compressor gonna come on oh yeah just switch on I 
building there. That's good. Compression's working. Yeah. So we'll tidy all this up and then we'll go from there.